In previous years of Shark Week, we've covered a massive range of strange, mysterious and impressive creatures. And of course, this year is going to be no different. Today's shark manages to tick all three of those boxes. It's the Goblin Shark. It's not quite as mysterious as the Megamouth Shark we covered here three years ago. There have even been attempts to keep a Goblin Shark in captivity. More on that later. But being both a very rare species of shark, and one that lives so exclusively deep down, there's still not an awful lot of data on it, certainly at least not as much as many sharks. Goblin sharks are usually found at depths of a few hundred metres, nearing a thousand. There have also been some accounts of goblin sharks being active below a thousand metres, with the deepest record of a goblin shark being at 1,300 metres. The goblin shark is certainly a deep sea shark then, but interestingly, it's nowhere near one of the deepest. In fact, the deepest recorded depth for a great white is 1,200 metres, which is only 100 metres higher than that of the goblin shark. The difference then is the exclusivity that the goblin shark devotes to these deep waters, and its biology reflects that. Given the sparsity of food at the depth the goblin shark lives, it can't afford to spend as much energy as other species trying to swim around to catch its prey. It has weakly developed muscle blocks and a generally soft body. Skinny, spiky teeth sit in a delicate, if rather remarkable, jaw that we'll get onto later. It's certainly not a very fast shark, either in long bursts like the Great White or Mako, nor is it one that can hide and jump out at prey like the tasseled Wobbegong. So how does it catch its prey? How does the shark survive? Even living such a languid lifestyle needs food, and one can struggle to find any at such depths. Perhaps the most immediately obvious unique features of the goblin shark, and indeed what gives it its name, is its very elongated snout. This snout has a high concentration of pores called ampullae of Lorenzini. These pores are electroreceptors. They are able to detect the tiny amounts of electricity that living organisms around them naturally give off. The hammer of the hammerhead shark also contains ampullae of Lorenzini. Both these strange aspects of these strange sharks helping them find prey, but at very different locations. While not particularly well developed, the goblin shark still has a better sense of sight than some other deep sea creatures and may be able to use these to also detect the faintest glimmers of light and movement that might reveal themselves at the goblin shark's depths. Indeed, many possible animals of prey that lurk at these points of the sea can be bioluminescent, so this slow, slithering shark will probably use everything it can to detect the things it's got to eat. So once it's found something, how does it go about catching it? Well, the goblin shark's strangest feature isn't actually its snout. That title is usually reserved for its mouth. The slender, spiky teeth that we talked about earlier are perfectly suited to quickly catching on to the kind of prey it's likely to encounter. When it finds itself suitably positioned over its food, the goblin shark's jaw remarkably protrudes out to snatch the prey for itself. The prey is swallowed whole. As I'm sure you could tell, these teeth are not adapted to chew in the slightest. Perhaps whoever named the shark misspoke, not the goblin shark, but the goblin shark. The, gob the goblin... I'm so sorry. Um, what does the goblin shark eat then? What's the diet of this remarkable fish? Well, perhaps not surprisingly, if a little disappointing, we don't know too much about the goblin shark's diet. It's been fairly difficult to properly analyse much of the stomach contents of specimens that have become available. However, of the ones that have been analysed, remains of ray finned fish that live at the shark's depths have been found. Unsurprising, but still good to know. The goblin shark isn't too fussy, however, as remains of octopus and even crab have been found as well. As long as it can catch it and it doesn't put up a real fight, it seems the goblin shark will clamp its super speedy jaws around anything. This fascinating creature, then, has indeed had a fairly limited interaction with humanity. First encountered in 1898 off the coast of Japan, it is estimated that only around 50 specimens have been caught and properly examined and described, a very large proportion of these being from the waters around Japan. The goblin shark can be found all over the globe, however, with specimens being recovered near Australia, South Africa, Spain and much more. 
Fairly recently was a goblin shark caught and released revealed in a paper describing the specimen in 2014. The shark was caught off the Gulf of Mexico, was around 5 metres in length and was caught from just under 500 metres under the surface. This was a particularly large specimen and interestingly it was the second shark to be caught in the area. The other specimen was of a similarly large length. Small details like this, I would imagine, are tantalising suggestions of a bigger, fascinating story of a species that could well be very common in the depths around the globe. Despite the rather terrifying look of this creature, the goblin shark poses virtually no threat to human life. They are usually at such crushing depths that human contact is minimal, and I can't see them successfully trying to fight a deep sea submarine anytime soon. These unlikelihoods haven't stopped humanity though, as there have actually been a couple of attempts to keep goblin sharks in captivity. Unfortunately, none of these specimens have survived for long. One kept at a university in Japan survived for a week, while another kept at Tokyo Sea Life Park survived for just two days. This distinctive and rather terrifying looking shark remains then much a mystery, and certainly remains one of the strangest sharks, and indeed organisms, to still inhabit the planet. That's it for today's Shark Week 2023 video. Thank you for watching, and do feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all. I do hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you tomorrow for, well, you know what's coming if you've been hanging around us for long enough. <laughs>